dramatic uh, music this morning for Ryan J. filling in for Molly. Hi, Rye. Is there breaking news on the morning blend? What am I missing? <laughs> Absolutely. It's all about the movies and the drama today and the yes. length of movies and all that, right? Oh, for sure. I think that the length of movies is a major factor in whether or not they're enjoyable. Right, because I know you're reviewing um, one that's very long today. So I want to, what do you think is too long? Because I've heard you refer to this before when you talk about movies or just entertainment in general, when it just gets a little too long. What's that cut off for you? Well, it doesn't matter so long as you don't notice it or don't feel it. So a movie can be 80 hours long, you know, as long as it engages you the whole time and you're really into it. So it's just you don't want to feel it drag. Usually movies should be under two hours, especially family films, uh, unless it's a Harry Potter film or The Wizard of Oz, which could be, again, 80 hours long and I'd, I'd want more. But, you know, <laughs> I think as long as it holds your attention and you're, you're not feeling it drag, you're not feeling it weigh you down, you're not checking your watch. If you don't check your watch, you're not inspired to check your watch or just think like, oh, this is getting kind of long. Is this going to wrap up soon? That's a problem. And honestly, sometimes even in a great movie, the length can be the kiss of death if it's too long. Mm, I think even just check your phone, not even your watch, but just having the, the need to feel like you're missing out because that tells you it's too long. Now, most people agree with you. Two hours is the cutoff. However, there is a new film and they say it's the longest film ever made. They're like, if, if two hours is your cutoff, Definitely don't ever see logistics. It's actually a new movie that's coming out. Uh, it's not here, but it's 857 hours long, ranking as the longest film ever made. That's insane. <laughs> I know. It basically is like a true, like all these like day in the lives, like going backwards. So anyway, I thought that was hilarious. I wanted to know your whole cutoff. I mean, obviously that is definitely a cutoff. So I'm, I'm with you there. Right. But some films are great at three hours. If you look at like the Harry Potter films or um, some uh, Quentin away. Tarantino films. What? Castaway. Castaway is great. Gone with the Wind, I think, is close to four hours, which you still have to see. Have you seen it yet? No, it's too long. I haven't you seen You promised it me. You promised me on air you'd I see it. I have a year. I have a year, Ryan. I promise Not you. Not now. Now you've got what? Seven months? <laughs> seven months. It's true. All right. Okay. Well, here, I've got to ask you this. So Squid Games, you watch that. I know it was the, it was the number one Netflix show. Um, for a long time, Squid Games, right? Yes. Um, Squid so there is a new real life quotes because obviously Squid Games didn't end well for people who didn't end the game and win the game. <laughs> so um, in terms of that, they're making this new real life experience, and it's in Saudi Arabia. I, I need to know, like, would you do it? Would so they're dressing the same? They're going to play some of the games. Obviously, they're saying there's no death involved. Would you do it? Would oh. you trust it? If there's no death, 100%, I'm all for cosplay and role play of like gaming and stuff. You know, how many Harry Potter parties have I been to? How many Wizard of Oz events have I been to? I mean, I'm going to be hosting some uh, presentations at MSOE and their sci-fi con coming up on April 23rd about Wizard of Oz. And there are going to be costume contests and stuff like that. So I'm really excited and into that. As long as there's legit no death. Like when I, <laughs> when I lightly heard about this, I was like, this is insane. It's like, who would sign up for the real life Hunger Games? But if it's completely simulated, and I'm sure I would be like one of the first to to be out, even if it's like the stop and go and you have to yeah, freeze. That you is know? one of the games, like, the stop and go, and, and then the walking on the glass panels, you know, ooh, things like that. You've got to have really strong harnesses and constitutions. And I would totally do it though, just for the Squid Game experience. I think it would be super fun. That's a really great idea. Um, you know, there are these uh, getaways and these fully immersive uh, theatrical experiences that they do at like other world theater productions around town and stuff. Um, and those are really fun and intriguing things where you go, you know, for a weekend and like you get to participate in thematically of things that are entertainment that you like. So I would be all into this. Would you go with me is the question, Tim. So here's the deal. I would never do the first round. I would never be one of the first people to go and do it because I would be like, I just got to make sure nobody's dying in this. You know? <laughs> but then once it's established, yes, I would I would absolutely consider Yeah, if you're going. just out and your game is over and you're yeah. like, great, I dressed up, I paid all this money to attend, and I'm out in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I went and played the zombie laser tag right before Halloween, and I tell you, like, it was so intense. I think I told you, like, I was, like, super sore. It was like I, I didn't realize it was going to be what it was. I thought it was yeah. just going to be this fun little laser tag. It wasn't. It felt like life and death, even though it wasn't. But these people yeah, were so yeah. serious about it. So I like things like that. But yeah, I don't want to be the first to try it. That's for sure. Right. 
I agree. LARP and escape rooms, I'm all into it. It's like it's like we become the game pieces in a board game, and so I think it'd be really fun. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the board pieces in a board game. I like that. Um, okay, so here's something I wanted to chat with you about, and this is just overused words in general. You know, people saying like things like awesome or, or interesting is even on the list. And the reason I wanted to bring this up with you is because I feel like you take – you, you take the time to choose a vocabulary when you're describing movies and entertainment and shows around town and everything you do, you choose such interesting language. And I wanted to know, is that natural for you or do you actually have to think about making your, what you describe exciting and delicious? No, it's not natural for me. And I do think that's a challenge in what I do as an editorialist and as someone who's partly describing what I'm seeing, but then also explaining and justifying why I liked it or didn't like it. And I am very annoyed. I'm self-critical and I'm critical of other people that I watch when they overuse certain words. And I'm certainly guilty of it. But when I notice it, I try extra special hard not to repeat it. So, for example, it would be so easy and lazy for me as an entertainment critic to overuse the word engaging. Oh. Right. But I have a limit. You really won't hear me. I think I think I said it today when we were talking about length. I felt like it was appropriate then. But in terms of like my movie reviews, you I actually limit myself and I'll mark it on the calendar. I will not say it more than once a year. So what will you say instead? Because these are some things I, wa I wanted to see what you would say instead of amazing or interesting or engaging. What would you use? Um, enthralling, edge of my seat, couldn't look away, wanted more. Like You just have to challenge yourself to be descriptive and use lots of adjectives. Sometimes I will, especially in my writing of reviews, use a thesaurus um, just oh. to just kind of get outside of the box. Or especially if I'm doing a radio segment and there's I'm doing three reviews in two minutes and I don't want to you know repeat the same word, but I want the same kind of feeling. So I'll look something up to be similar. So, but I think like using the thesaurus and those of us who look to the dictionary that does help uh, build vocabulary. Yeah, we're out of time, but I want you to use later because you're coming back for your movie reviews. Stunning, jaw-dropping, gripping, riveting, you know, <laughs> just t pepper in some of those. Okay, we're out of time, but there's a new vending machine, Ryan, that sells pizza, and I just want to know, um, is it, what would you buy in a vending machine? One word. One word? Well, I, uh, glass wipes? <laughs> there we go. That's our sound off for today. What do you wish you could buy in a vending machine? I love it. Ryan's going to stick around. Thanks, Ryan.